I guess for starters, how did it feel to finally get to be back out there? It was great. It was great. Um, fun being back out there with the guys. Can cross the, the lines, you know, be right there. Talk with them, do some drills, some handwork stuff. Get, get ready to get going. Ron, what can you tell us about your offseason? We understand you had a, a right knee procedure. Yeah. Um, but how tough a decision was that? And were there decisions to make about surgery and other body parts? Yeah, uh, it was a process. It was a process. I wasn't trying to get any procedures done, but that, but that one in particular, I really had no other choice. But it was um, by far the best decision to, to go ahead and get cleaned up and feel feel great. How's your toe feeling at this point? You dealt with it a lot last year. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's good. It's good. I'm, I'm I'm good, ready to roll. Yeah, they got they got a plan for me, program for me. Uh, just trying to stick with it, and uh, we're progressing, kind of going through uh, a little bit of a slow progression, in my opinion. But uh, I'm not arguing or, or combating. You know, I'm here to play, so I love to get out there and, and compete. I'm also year 11, and I've been through 10 training camps before, so uh, it's a little bit of a balance. As a follow-up, how much work do you, do you need? It's kind of hard to say, really, uh, until you get out there and do it. You know, everybody's going to have rust. Even even with experience and muscle memory, you still got some things to work out, time and hand placement, getting the feel for certain things. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to grasp quick quickly when I'm when I'm in. Um, but it, we're sticking to the plan. Brian, you say it's a slow progression. Slow progression for you is probably – a lot faster than what they want, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm being, being disciplined, uh, being a professional, just taking it a day at a time. It's, it's challenging. It's challenging. But um, working with my guys though has been, has been great. Like we're seeing, I'm seeing so much progress from them. The intent, um, attention to detail, and then execution uh, has been, has been great. So today, just being able to be on the field and and be more hands-on, in a sense, um, and, and help out more than just being off to the sideline. Was, uh, today was great. Toronto, what did you, you, you take away from watching some of those team drills in the trenches before you got there? It's been a bit of a, a, a battle, uh, some highs and lows. We want to we wanna kind of even that out more uh, on a more consistent basis. We don't want explosive plays and then big negatives. You know what I mean? We want more consistency. So. Uh, staying, staying on on that task and and keeping that the the focus and the goal of O line play is consistency. That's what that's what you always want to see. Toronto, what seems to be the point of emphasis for the new O line coach? Um, speed, velocity off the ball, uh, controlling the line of scrimmage. We want to we want to dominate and dictate that 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 line of scrimmage as much as as much as possible. Um, and we do that. We we knock people off the the ball a yard or two. Uh, we got a great chance to win a lot of games. So Ron, I'm sure if I asked any player in that locker room, they would all say that they would love to play 17 games this year. Yeah. But for you especially, how much would that mean? That's, that's goal number one, man. Goal number one. And I'm, I'm going to keep going for it, uh, doing everything I can to, to make it a reality. Um, I'm here to play. You know what I mean? I'm here to play. So that, that's goal number one. But all I'm focusing on right now is today and then the next one and then the next one. I'm not going to look too far ahead. Last year, when you and two were on the field versus when you weren't, I mean, this offense just was clicking when you guys were together. Is that a realization that hey, we're two two pretty pretty big parts of this offense. We both need to be available. That's not a secret. That's not a secret. You know, you uh, you need your best players to, to play and play their best. You know, what I mean, especially you getting down in, into the stretch into the playoffs. Like we're gonna need all our best players to be playing our best football. So me, Tua, um, Tyreek, Agba. David Long, now Christian, we're going to need the best players to be our absolute best. John, you spend so much of your offseason kind of working with you know younger players, instructing O-line masterminds, things like that. I'm curious at this stage of your career, do you still find little things to add to your game at this point? No, for sure, for sure. I think that's uh, why I've been able to do it for, for a long time is continue to evolve and, and add tools to my toolbox. Um, I, learned, I learned things from First year, second year players, just 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 by watching, just by just by watching it. Um, think of the the cool thing about O line play is like we got all the answers, 
on film, you know, so you can go back and see, all right, what what the guys do to combat this move or combat this stunt or, you know what I mean? So you got the answers on film, so you go back and watch it and you try to go execute. So try to add more tools to the toolbox. When would you get your most beneficial work in uh, joint practices or in preseason games? Joint practice, yeah. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, it's been a minute since I played a preseason game, for sure. I'm not a... Not against it, of course. I do what I, whatever I need to do. But uh, no, those joint practices, you get a chance in, in a more controlled setting to continue to, to practice and work on um, adding tools to your toolbox. So in the, in the joint practice, I feel much more comfortable taking a jump set or, or switching up a set than I would in game. You know, in game, you want to go to what you, what you know works the most. But in practice, as we're fine tuning and we're, we're perfecting our craft, you feel more uh, that's more of an advantage and, and, and time for you to, to really work and perfect your craft. Final question. Duran, noticed you no, noticed you boxing on the sideline the first few days. I know it's something that you've been doing for a while, but what exactly does boxing, has that done for you in your career since you took it up? Yeah, just cardio, uh, low impact on the joints, um, opposed to running uh, as much. So just getting a lot of cardio and then um, precision with the hands and you know, once you get tired, just that, that mental fortitude that it builds, that mental toughness. Are there things that carry over from that to, like, your initial punch whenever play starts? Try to make it correlate as I'm training, but it's two different worlds, two different sports. Uh, like, I box from a left-handed stance because I play left tackle, even though I'm right-handed. So uh, I try to make it, you know, cor correlate as much as I can, but not, not necessarily because, you know, I've been doing all this, and I he ain't really. If he boxing like that, I'm gonna knock him out. But he's doing all that, and uh, you feel me? Yeah. Your your boxing or two is you just. I'll whoop to him. <laughs> <laughs> all right, buddy. See ya.